Assalamu alaikum. Hope all of you are fine. So we continue with the second lecture of the development of the nervous system. In this lecture, we will discuss the development of the primary and the secondary brain vesicles, the development of the myelin cephalon into the medulla oblongata, then the development of the metan cephalon into the pons and the cerebellum. So as we have discussed in the previous lecture, the formation of the neural tube uh, with the development of the nervous system with this formation of the neural tube in the third week. So after the closure of the anterior and the posterior neuropores, the neural tube, it forms the certain brain vesicles, which are called the primary vein vesicles. So cordial to the fourth pair of the somites, the structure of the neural tube forms the spinal cord, which we have discussed in the previous lecture. And cranial to the fourth pair of the somites, the, brain, the neural tube shows the dilatations, uh, which are called the primary brain vesicles. So three primary brain vesicles, they are formed during the third week of the development, the rhombencephalon or the hindbrain, the mesencephalon or the midbrain, and the prosencephalon or the forebrain. Later, during the fifth week of the development, these uh, primary vesicles, they give rise to the secondary brain vesicles. So the rhombencephalon, it will give rise to the metencephalon and the myelencephalon. And the mesencephalon, it remains as such as the, it does not divide. And the prosencephalon, it divides into the two brain vesicles, the telencephalon and the diencephalon. So during the fifth week of the development, there are five brain vesicles are formed, which are called the secondary brain vesicles. Later on, this myelencephalon, it will give rise to the uh, medulla oblongata and the metencephalon, it will give rise to the pons and the cerebellum. Whereas the mesencephalon, as it does not divide, it gives rise to the midbrain. And the thiencephalon, it will give rise to the thalamus, hypothalamus and the epithalamus. And the telencephalon will form the cerebral hemispheres or the cerebrum. So the cavity of the telencephalon uh, is the lateral ventricle. The cavity of the diencephalon is the third ventricle. And the uh, midbrain uh, cavity is the cerebral aqueduct. Whereas the fourth ventricle is the cavity of the pons, pons med and medulla. So the three brain vesicles, they are formed uh, cranial to the fourth pair uh, uh, so of somites. And there are certain brain uh, the fractures, they are also formed, which are the mesencephalic fracture, the pontine fracture, and the cervical fracture. During the fifth week of the development, there is a rapid growth of the brain uh, the vesicles and there is unequal differentiation. The head fold is formed and because of the uh, uh, less space, there is the, uh, the bending uh, at, and the flexures, they are formed. There, at the level of the midbrain, there is a flexure which is called the mesencephalic flexure. And at the level of the spinal cord and the hindbrain, there is a cervical flexure, which for, uh, demarc uh, forms the demarcation between the hindbrain and the spinal cord. And in the adult life, this cervical flexure is forms the anatomical landmark for the uh, emergence of the first cervical uh, rootlets at the level of the foramen magnum. So uh, between these uh, two flexures, the mesencephalic and the cervical flexure, there is an unequal growth and the differentiation of the neural tube. So because of this unequal uh, uh, growth and differentiation, another flexure is formed in the opposite direction, which is called the pontine flexure. The pontine flexure causes the uh, uh, thinning of the roof plate of the fourth ventricle. And because of this uh, differentiation uh, in their uh, growth, the transfer section, if we cut the transfer section at the different levels of this uh, neural tube, it will show the different boundaries and also the gray matter and the white matter will be different from the spinal cord. So the H-shaped gray matter. So this is again showing you all the three, uh, brain five uh, brain vesicles and the, uh, the, uh, and how the embryo is uh, head fold is formed and there is a cranial to the uh, the fourth pair of the somites the uh, neural tube has formed the different brain vesicles and the flexures 
and caudal is the formation of all these spinal cord and this embryo is folded on itself. Now the development of the uh, medulla oblongata from the myelencephalon. This uh, red area shows the adult uh, structure of the medulla oblongata which is projecting from so the medulla oblongata it develops uh, from the myelencephalon uh, during the fetal life and uh, by the 20th week of the uh, gestation the further development takes place so the myelencephalon has the two parts the caudal part which uh, forms the closed part of the medulla and it resembles the spinal cord the cavity uh, uh, is the central canal which resembles the cavity of the mid, uh, uh, central canal uh, of the spinal cord and the alar and, alar and the basal uh, plates, uh, they lie uh, the dors, uh, uh, dorsally uh, and uh, the uh, the H-shaped gray matter of the spinal cord is disturbed in the medulla oblongata because of the uh, unequal growth of the brain uh, vesicles. In the rostral part of the myelencephalon, uh, it shows uh, the wide opening and it forms the open part of the medulla oblongata. The roof uh, or plate will form the roof of the fourth ventricle and the, there is a migration of the alar plate so that the alar plate comes to lie lateral to the basal plate. And the dorsal portion of the alar lamina, it will form the inferior rhombic lip. So because of this uh, uh, rap, uh, in unequal growth and the uh, formation of the pontine flexures and the widening of the cavity of the fourth ventricle, now you can see here the migration of the alar plate uh, in the different directions and the basal plate, the uh, basal plate which comes to lie at the base of the cavity of the fourth ventricle. Now, a few of the neuroblasts from the alar plate, they will migrate more ventrally and they will uh, form in the later uh, the inferior olivary nuclei. Now, this uh, alar plate and the basal plates, they will be divided into the different columns, uh, cell columns. Now, as we have discussed previously, that the alar plate neuroblast will always form the sensory neurons and the basal plate uh, the, the neuroblast, they will form the motor neurons. So, uh, starting from the basal plate, they will, uh, uh, the gray matter or the uh, neuroblast of the basal plate, they will split up into the three cell columns. Starting from the medial to the lateral sides, they will form the somatic efferent column, then special visceral efferent, and then general visceral efferent. Now these columns, they will continue in the brainstem and similarly in the alar plate, they will divide also into the three cell columns. That is the general visceral afferents, the special visceral afferents and the somatic afferent column. So the alar plate neuroblast, they will give rise to the sensory neurons. So the alar plate will give rise to the solitary nucleus or the nucleus of the tractus solitarius and it contains the general visceral afferent fibers for the taste as well as the special visceral afferent column. Then is the spinal uh, nucleus and the tract of the trigeminal nerve it which contains the general somatic afferent column. Then is the cochlear and the vestibular nuclei which contains the special somatic afferent column. The inferior olivary nucleus which relates to the cerebellum and it has been detached from the alar plate to come more ventrally. Then the dorsal column uh, nuclei that is the gracile nucleus and the cunate nucleus which are, lie posteriorly. So these uh, sensory uh, uh, neuro, uh, neurons they are all derived from the alar plate. The basal plate neuroblast, they will give rise to the motor neurons. So the uh, uh, basal plate will give rise to the, in the medulla oblongata, it will give rise to the nuclei of the hypoglossal nerve, uh, which uh, contains the general somatic efferent fibers. And then is the nucleus ambiguous. And this nucleus ambiguous, it will uh, form the special visceral efferent fibers. 
then the dorsal nucleus of the vagus uh, and the inferior salivatory nucleus both of which form the general visceral efferent fibers So the walls of the median cephalon, uh, will, they will differentiate into the two structures, the pons and the cerebellum. Uh, and the cavity of the median cephalon forms the anterior part of the fourth ventricle. So as in the rostral part of the medulla oblongata uh, or the myelin cephalon, the pontine flexure causes the divergent of the lateral walls of the uh, pons, which spreads the gray matter and the floor of the fourth ventricle. And uh, as in the myelin cephalon, the neuroplasts in each basal plate, they develop into the motor nuclei and organized into the three columns on each side. So they are also the basal and the alar plates, they will also organize into the three columns. And this uh, dorsal portion of the alar plate, it forms the inferior rhombic lip uh, uh, because of the, uh, the divergence and the formation of the pontine flexure. So it is folded here. Now you can see in this section that uh, there is an uh, uh, the alar plate uh, extended upwards, the dorsal por uh, portion uh, uh, gives rise also to the formation uh, of this, uh, contributes in the formation of the pons and this uh, sulcus limitans, it extends up to the midbrain. Uh, this is showing you the basal plate and this is the, uh, the rhombic, uh, the lip. Uh, which is uh, the formed uh, from the dorsal portion of the alar plate and these uh, basal plates is now the uh, the rhombic lip they it uh, they develops later into the cerebellum and the alar plate it forms the four sensory uh, tracts uh, that is the uh, pontine nuclei uh, <clears throat> and the uh, somatic aff uh, afferent fibers uh, somatic afferent column then is the special visceral afferent for the taste and the general visceral afferent. Whereas the basal plate, it develops into the three motor tracts. That is the general visceral efferent, a general visceral, uh, special visceral efferent and the somatic efferents. So this is uh, showing you the transfer section of the pons and the midbrain and uh, the red uh, portion, uh, areas they are the uh, basal plates the nuclei the neuroblast migrating from the basal plate and the blue one is just showing the alar plate uh, neuroblast now you can identify the different pattern of the alar uh, and the basal plates in the uh, pons uh, cerebellum and the uh, midbrain which we uh, midbrain will discuss in the uh, next step so now you can see here in the, the these are uh, showing you all the events in the development of the cerebellum. If we cut this section from the high brain, we, the, uh, this is the area here where, from where uh, the rhombic lips they develop and these rhombic lips they dilate and they meet in the midline to form these uh, cerebral hemisphere. Now the central portion it will form the nerve vermis. So the pontine flexure, uh, it uh, deepens and the rhombic lip they compresses to form these cerebral plates. Now you can see they are visible here, the cerebral plates and these plates they fuse in the midline. During this fusion, they overgrow the rostral uh, one, uh, half of the fourth ventricle and overlap the pons and the medulla. The fuse plates, they show the central portion, the vermis in the mid and the two cerebral hemispheres laterally. Uh, the caudal portion will form the nodular lobe and the cranial portion will grow faster to form the rest of the cerebral vellum, the two cerebral hemispheres and the uh, vermis. The development of the primary fissure between the anterior and the posterior lobes and the development of the transverse fissures and the folia, they are all to increase the surface area. So this is showing you the adult structure in which they, you can identify the horizontal fissure, the transverse fissures, these flocculonodular nodular lobe. So at about of the fourth month, these fissures, they develop from the, on the surface and the folia of the adult cerebellum, they gradually develops. So the transverse fissure, 
it separates the nodule from the vermis and the flocculus from the hemisphere. This flocculonodular lobe is the most primitive one and it is also called the archicerebellum and is connected to the vestibular apparatus. So the vermis and the anterior lobe, they will form the paleocerebellum, which is associated with the sensory data from the limbs. And the posterior lobe, it forms the neocerebellum, which is concerned with the selective control of the limb movements. So this is all about the development of the um, brain uh, stem, in which we have discussed the development of the myelencephalon and the metencephalon. We'll continue with the development of the mesencephalon in the next lecture. Thank you.